there, Rollers. If you're a big honkin' nerd like Brandon and myself, you might enjoy our super originally named TTRPG news and discussion podcast, The Goblins and Growlers Podcast. We talk about everything from what's happening in the world of Dungeons and Dragons to indie tabletop games, old modules, and even tabletop RPG adjacent merch like the Dark Tower board game remake. If that sounds like your bag of dice, come check us out on the Goblins and Growlers podcast over at bit.ly slash Goblins Growlers podcast. That's all lowercase bit.ly slash Goblins Growlers podcast. Come nerd out with us. You you recording? Yeah, I'm cording. You're cording, bro. I'm cording, cord. bro. I'm cording, bro. You even record, I'm, bro. I'm so cording that you might mistake me for a chicken breast that's been breaded and filled with blue cheese. That's how cording I am. Oh, I'm so cording. I'm so cording. You can call me James. <laughs> <laughs> you James Gordon. I'm, I'm so cording that uh, people have been blockaded from entering my vicinity. I I'm thought so you were going to say entering me, so I'm, uh, you went in an unexpected <laughs> direction there. This is Quid Pro Roll, a fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. Well, howdy, listener. Welcome to the Daily Crier Listening Show, where all the news and varying and beyond can make its way, well, right to you. So, the party concluded their stay in a town called Valmouth, collecting some quality grains for midnight on the way out, and determining a direct trek to the landlocked marine is their safest choice of travel. Now, it's a good thing they kept that writ from the queen, as it helped them pass a mighty large line of merchants and travelers being stopped and checked at the city gates. Though once inside, the shroud of impending war loomed heavy over the city of Marine, and the once busy streets seemed old and unwelcoming. War is heavy like the hewn stone set in the grass and dirt, marking the only true consequence and guarantee of such quarrels. Take a moment for yourself today. Take a chance on something you're unsure of. And most importantly, y'all take care now. So on the last episode... You guys had made it to the town of Marine, which is under quite the uh, dismal pall has been cast over it. There seems to be this energy of fear, anxiety, and this feeling of being watched, which might have something to do with all of the flags with eyes on them, just as a guess. But you finally reached the castle stairs, and on top of it was standing a figure that looked familiar to you. And because I know none of you are going to remember which Alaria Knight is associated with blue, I'm going to have you roll history. Dabba D. Can I get an advantage? Yes. <laughs> because I know the Alaria Knights yes. went to school with some of them because this too just ain't going to cut it. Um, <laughs> I got a 16. I got a 9. 7. I got a nat 1. All right. Vote. You are the only one in this party who remembers even clapping eyes on this guy. That's you remember that his name. You remember that his name is Argent and that he is one of the Alarian Knights. Okay. As as they're ascending the stairs, Solinar out loud is like, ah, Leandros. We we met, I think, right? Hey, that's not Leandros. No. No, I would know if it were Leandros. Oh. That, um... Oh, oh what, what's the name? Argent. That's Argent. Oh, oh, it, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that's on me. I'm not, I'm not great at names. He crosses his arms and kind of, like, looks you up and down. 
I guess I don't make the impression that I thought I did. That's fine. I remembered you. Mm. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Regardless, why are you here? Got to see the queen. She's busy. What do you need? We got this note. Yeah, delightful. She's busy. What do you need? It's really important. We, yeah, we're gonna, we need, which is why you're talking to me. We need we, to infiltrate the Borisian Empire. That's that's thing number one. And thing number two, we wanted to update her on the status of the mission that we're on. Oh, yeah, yeah. He we turns update. he turns toward the castle and kind of jerks his head as a gesture to follow him. <laughs> Whoa, your neck. <laughs> As he enters into the the castle itself, it, through the Grand Hall, he's going to take a couple of turns before he opens the door to a small room that lacks a lot of pomp or luxury to it. It seems slightly bare and a little bit Spartan in its decor. Oh, I like this the good Spartan room. For Spartans. But does, does that mean like instead of beds or anything like that, it's just like bales of or not bales, but like hay just strewn on the ground? It's not a bedroom. It looks to be some kind of think of oh, it so, as like a medieval conference room. Oh, so instead of like chairs at the conference table, is it just like hay spread on the floor? <laughs> no, but it is stools instead of chairs. OK, no back support. Solonar just uh leans against a wall. As the last of you enter, Argent is going to close the door behind him and lock it. He is going to match Solinar's energy by leaning against the wall with his arms crossed. All right, lay it on me. Take it away, Solinar. Uh, well, okay. So last time you saw us, we had just gotten back from Ocean Var. And there was some some complications there. Uh, we there's a lot to get into, so settle in. <laughs> Argent kind of rubs his hands together and then runs his fingers through his hair. So the dragon's dead, and you've got three of five. That's that's. Pretty close to the state of things, yes. We do have the key for the Silver Temple, and the Silver Temple is somewhere in this area. We have not quite determined where it is. Where the we queen really told me that it was around here somewhere. Where we are really uh in a bind, I guess is the right way to put it, is that getting the key for the golden temple is going to be massively complicated. His eyebrows it's, raise as he sort of gestures for you to go on. It's we, we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. Are we? Wait, what do you mean we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves? Because you know the weight of leadership. Oh, yes, yes. This is this is very true. Uh what what Johannes is inferring here is uh we have to go to the Boris Empire because that's where the gold temple is. And the key is either a component of, or is perhaps in its entirety, the the emperor's crown. You, uh... You, you have to... <laughs> you have to get the... the crown of the... the, the big shot of the uh, Boris Empire? Yes, that is correct. And on top of that, the best suggestion we could get from the party who came before us about how they were planning to get the crown of the Boris Emperor was try seducing him, which <laughs> I don't think goes super well for us. To be honest, uh, the best person for that job might maybe be Alita, and well, I no. don't think... I don't think she's particularly interested in that task, quite frankly. I thought you were about to say she wasn't particularly attractive, and then I was going to laugh. And no, Regardless. No, Solinar's, Solinar's better at Riz than some people in the party. <laughs> Koza. Hey. Oh, 
Hey. We look, give Solonar some time to throw this man into a bathtub and knock him unconscious <laughs> and put him in a fridge and put him in a cage and leave him so that he can be found later by people who might possibly care for him. Yeah, that is probably one of the worst ways he could end a date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but give 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 Solar some time. That that maybe that's what the Boris Emperor is into. That could be precisely the strategy. Yo, royalty, they're weird, man. Kinky AF. Let him cook. (laughs) Regardless, I'm not entirely certain how that's going to work for you guys, but... Well, I I think we are abandoning that particular plan and trying to come up with one of our own. We are admittedly uh, short on tools that I think would be particularly capable in that scenario not least of which my understanding of the Barosian Emperor is that uh, he he likes to be involved when it comes to things like war yep and that's getting closer and closer than we think I I think all of us noticed that uh, things are a little more military here than they were last time we passed through they're gonna march in a month you you know when they're marching? Yep. At least unless they change their minds. Did, did they send like a ransom or something? What? No. Spies? He shrugs. It's just a bizarrely called shot is all. <laughs> I'm not compromising anyone. Meanwhile, over in the Brosian Empire... You see somebody with a sword, they step up to a plate, and there's a pitcher who's got, like, a, <laughs> like a severed head or something, and the guy with the sword points out to center field. The pitcher's like, no way! He's like, one month, one month, you watch. <laughs> also, I like how Alon pronounced that as the Brosian Empire. They've all got popped collars and frosted tips over and there. Backwards ball caps. Brosian. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the accent won't be Russian. It'll be like, sup, brah? Yeah, exactly. Bruh. The Brazian Empire. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Well, welcome to the Brazian Empire. Are you all you looking nat- to, like, pop something? Or, like, what's going on? You need a natty bow? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have it. You've, you've, you've uncovered the mystery of the Barosian accent. Natty bow? More like natty Barosian. So, uh, part, part of our goal here is to update you all on our, our status which obviously not ideal, but we have made progress and we continue to make progress. And I personally feel confident that we can do this. Uh, but if you were to have any, even even just advice on how one might part the Barosian Emperor from his crown, ideally without severing his neck in the process... I mean, you'd be doing us a great service if you severed his head. I mean, look, if I'm given the opportunity to uh, (laughs) remove his ability to breathe, then yes, absolutely. Sounds great. But I don't anticipate that our group of ragamuffin kind of adventuring types is going to be viewed, one, kindly by the Barosian army, two, with trust by the Barosian army, and three, able to get within spitting distance of the Barosian Emperor with anything but our bedclothes on. And Johannes goes, <laughs> And Johannes has range, so that's saying something. Got mm. serious range. I can spit this spitball over a quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what that means is we can give you half the support we thought we could for the next month, and then that's the best we can do. Well, uh, if Solonar kind of stops and gets a pondering look, uh, I'm thinking of a thing, but I don't, I don't know if Solonar is smart enough to think this thing. <laughs> if anybody else wants to get a hand on this ball... <laughs> What what is the thing? Maybe I'm smart enough to think it, but my character maybe my, <laughs> my character might be smart enough, but I might not be smart enough. I, I well, love like maybe I'm not smart enough, but Coz is pretty smart. <laughs> well, the, the Josh 
the Josh thought is if the Barosian Emperor likes to be part of the action when it comes to doing things like invading other countries, then odds are good he's going to be setting foot on Alarian soil. And if that's the case, then the party could be part of one of those skirmishes and potentially be an asset on the battlefield, ideally bring him down. And if we can successfully bring him down, then we could use the pearl <coughs> to escape that fight. Uh, but that's one, it's a long shot. Two, it's a lot more strategic than I think most of our party is used to thinking. <laughs> I mean, uh, can I roll history to see if Koza would know that the Brosian Empire Emperor would go out on the battlefield? Yeah, I'm willing to let you roll for that. I feel like that's a reasonable thing, like in medieval I, worlds, to think. I I thought that was a thing that we'd been told once or twice. That's the only reason I brought it up. Well, I'm saying, yeah, it, yeah, you have been told it. Whether or not your party remembers it is up in the air. Yeah, and then like making the logical conclusion from there that oh, if he's a pretty involved guy, he probably likes to go out on the battlefield. I rolled a um, twenty-three. Yeah, you would absolutely know a couple of things about the Barosian Emperor. One of them is definitely that he is known for being bloodthirsty, capable on the battlefield, and willing to swing a sword. Uh, um, you, you said the, the, the Brosians were going to, to, to invade in, in a number of weeks. Do you know if the Brosian Emperor is going to join the battle? That I'm not sure. Because... I wouldn't be surprised if he was, but... Coming all the way to Alari is kind of a interesting choice for a head of state. If he did, though, maybe we could make ourselves useful to the Alarian army. How? I mean, we're all skilled fighters. We've been through a lot on this journey, and we've learned a lot about watching each other's backs and making sure that danger falls before we do. I graduated from paladin school and I have a paladin license. For everything that I hear, you guys are not exactly the pinnacle of teamwork. Well, that's we this far, though. Yeah. I and like how, how much we all talked over ourselves at the same time. <laughs> yeah. to that. That, was, that was beautiful. That was so well timed. <laughs> and how much of that's been luck? Oh, very, a lot of Very it. little. Most. <laughs> I, yeah. I think there's been significantly less luck than there has been us accomplishing things in less than ideal circumstances, <laughs> admittedly, admittedly. Frequently, those circumstances are things we built ourselves, but we still got things done when other things went wrong. That's not luck. They said, you know, they say that you can make your own luck. And I would say we've gotten really good at just making enough luck to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Yeah, shockingly, that is not filling me with excitement and confidence at this process. But dude, think of the skill that it took us to get to that level of luck. Dude, dude, bro, <laughs> dude, bro. Listen. How's it going, dude? <laughs> I... I'm not saying install us in one of your battalions or make us some sort of leadership element. I don't I don't know that we're cut out for that sort of role. I'm I saying have a, I have a I have a military graduate degree in this <laughs> country. <laughs> you know what would help us the most that you could do that would offer us the most military support? Dragons. Well, Metal dragons oh, we don't that have fight any. the color dragons. Yeah, we we would love to do that, and that's part of what we're trying to figure out here now, because I, if we try to just the five of us go take down the Barosian Emperor with wh however many people surround him all the time, I know that goes bad for us. So what your plan is to abandon your mission and just hope that it works out okay on the battlefield? That's not. That's not at all what I said. My my thought was, if we could find some way to be part of that skirmish and to turn the tide enough that we can bring down the Emperor, then we can use that to immediately go to the final temple and bring back metallic dragons. 
the metallic dragons will have very little to assist if Alari is gone. God, Alon is back here just being like, straw man argument, straw man. <laughs> <laughs> Johannes went to military college. He should understand that. Yeah, he's probably like hit a sword against some straw men before. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he probably took a rhetoric class. <laughs> Look, the Barosian army outclasses us in a lot of different ways. One of them is that they have drakes and dragons. And really, those are the two big ones. They will rip us apart as it stands. Having metallic dragons gives us a fighting shot. I would... So what you're saying is that at the point that Barosian soldiers have set foot on Alaria, it's already too late. I'm not saying the second that they hit shore it's too late, but I'm saying too late is coming much faster the second they're here. So really, we might need to figure out some way without waiting for the Emperor to set foot on a battlefield. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, we're on the clock then. Okay. Um, hmm. You know, there was that fake dragon that we dealt with. Maybe we could get one of those and have it just sort of fly around over here uh, I, I, around like oh, dusk. I, I, I think this is an actual battle, not 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 a. Not you didn't a, let me finish. Oh, OK. I was going to say we have it fly around a little bit, raise some questions uh, for the Barosians a little bit. And maybe that delays them a little bit longer because they think maybe there's a dragon. Yeah, I, mean, I actually legitimately believed that that was a dragon until I was punching wood out of it. Do you have any competent oh. strategists amongst the five of you? Hey, man, mm. I'm not I'm not seeing any great strategy coming from you. So maybe just respect the brainstorming process. I'm not Imagine. one of the chosen heroes supposed to bring back the dragons. Oh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really done a bang up job so far. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been hard to get all these keys together, but it's been a lot of work. We're doing it. Yeah, I think I like Boat's idea because I legitimately thought that that was a dragon. And if it even delays them just by a bit because they think, oh, no, dragon, we got to we go. Now we got to think differently about how our aerial support moves in. Then, I mean, who knows? A little bit of time can be a lot of bit of time. But would that would that delay them, though, or was that make them go? oh, it's another remaining metallic dragon. Let's move now and take care of it before it becomes a bigger problem. I, I, I yeah, we were so kind of our... hoping we were going to be able to use that one last metallic dragon. So were we. What were you saying, Koza? I, I was saying I agree with you, Solonar. Sounds to me like we need to just keep moving. And quickly. Well then, let's ask the queen... Or a boat, and let's start making our way over to the boat. You're gonna have to find a boat on your own. We don't have any we can spare. Do well, well I don't float. I love how this guy is like, yo, we need tons of support, like way more support than you could <laughs> yeah. ever give, and you need to get it to us quick. Also, we you have half of what we have, and what half is is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, you, well, then we'll have to find a boat ourselves. And if we can't find a boat, we build a boat. And if we can't build a boat, we already have a boat who's right here. Do you do you have... I know you've got contacts. I'm aware of having contacts. And you don't need to tell me any names or anything like that. Do you have a way of reaching a specific smuggling vessel? Pro probably. His eyebrows are, like, up in his hairline. Because there's oh. one that we've traveled with before and that seems like the right fit for a job like this of getting a group of adventurers onto Brosian shores without uh, alerting their entire navy or aerial dragon squadrons or whatever the hell else the Barosian Empire uses to keep people from just dropping anchor and shooting cannons at them. What's the ship? The Illustre? Never heard of it, but I'll see what I can do. 
Can I can I insight check that never heard of it? Yes. Solinar looks at the rest of the group and goes, I can't believe he's never heard of it. That's, I mean, it's amazing, but I guess they're just that good at their jobs. Can I insight check that? I'll see what I can do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's uh, not going to look into anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 got a, I got a 12. He does seem like he's intending to get this for you guys. You can tell a little bit that there's there's something behind his aggression. Yeah, it is strange that he hasn't heard of the Illustre, but I'm glad that he's going to look into it. And I think there's something behind his aggression. So earlier... Did you just say that out loud with him right there? (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. So earlier he said something about... um, Like, he said, like... Like, I'm not going to compromise anybody, but it sounded kind of sarcastic to me. Was that actually sarcastic? Would you like to roll a retroactive insight insight check? check. (laughs) Hurry, boat, find something to insight check. (laughs) Alina, insight check something. A 14. There is somebody that he's getting information from that is on that side that you that you think he he is actively trying to avoid saying where he is getting that info. Mm-hmm. But he is kind of winking and nudging that there is a spy there. My boy, Rizian. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's probably Dwayneathy. Whoa. Call back. Got hey, of, it's, look, he's good arc. for undercover missions because he always has a rock solid alibi. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. He, he got Stone out of the skin. ocean. Ocean Var Games and immediately went into Spycraft. Mm-hmm. He's like, <laughs> can I take mine on the rocks? Yeah. <laughs> He's actually infiltrated the Boar Erosion Empire. Done. Pinnacle. That's the best. <laughs> and no, none of these jokes are getting better than that one. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to insight Argent- check your appreciation of that show. Yeah, yeah, insight check. Roll it. <laughs> Roll it. Uh, okay. Before Argent leaves the room, is there... I mean, you know what our next couple of destinations are. Is there anything that's going on that we should be alert for and or that we could do that maybe would be a little bit assistive? Is there? Do you need a message run to port? Do you need, like, anything like that? I I know we don't have a lot to offer, um, especially when it comes to running a large and efficiently organized, well, just about anything. But if we can be helpful, I think we would like to be. You know, there actually is something that you could do that would take advantage of your very unique talents. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Make as much chaos in the Boris Empire as you can and see if you can divert any of their military away from us. <sighs> Johannes turns and he looks at Alita and he pulls out a box of matches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I honestly, I think that's kind of a given. Whether or not we plan to, I think we're going to be leaving a bit of a trail of chaos in our path. Seems on brand. But yeah, if that's if that's what you want, I'm sure we can arrange a little extra. I mean, look, if you could go ahead and behead the emperor, that would take a lot off of me. I mean, if I imagine the... the next in line for the throne's not going to be quite as, you know, bloodthirsty. Are you well, saying that that would take a weight off your shoulders? It would <laughs> indeed. He's the emperor. Kill him now. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him right now. Get Do him. it. No. Do it. Just stop telling people now. to kill this guy because he's the Do emperor. It. No. No, he's quit whispering dark secrets in our ears. Kill him. Imagine no. having Gabe, Gabe actually, like, in the back of your mind, like, while you're just going through your life. Just being like, <laughs> you're, like, at the counter at the grocery store, and it's just like, he's the emperor. Kill him. <laughs> if, we, if we get the opportunity, sure. I don't imagine that's going to be the case. I have a very hard time imagining a situation in which we are armed and in front of the emperor 
but uh, yeah, if if it's possible, you got it. Consider it done. Well, I won't go that far. But creating chaos, we're, we're practically masters at that. Are there Consider any? It done. Are there any organized athletic events scheduled to happen in the Boros Empire soon? Number one, I do not know. Number two, I do not care. Number three, do you really have the time? Well, you see, that's how we would sow chaos. That's what we did at the Ocean Var games. Yeah, it always starts there. I'll take that well, as a no. <laughs> number four, let's get out that door. Time to time to get on over to the Barosian Empire. Yeehaw. Uh, uh, there is there is actually a thing that maybe you have the resources to help us with, uh, because we've been struggling with it ourselves. Mm-hmm. We we're being hunted. Oh yeah. By a variety of bounty hunters, and uh, they seem to have a pretty good idea of where we've been, and precisely where we're going. Which the where we've been, I kind of get. The where we're going, I don't. Yeah, it's not been good. Who hired them? Uh, it's unclear, but the contract, as I understand it, originates in Talaire. I, I, wasn't it, uh, 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 Emberlin? Was it Emberlin? Wait, did Ilfield tell you that Emberlin hired bounty hunters? This is... And we're only just now hearing that? Did, did I not... Oops. <laughs> <laughs> You had let you had told the group that you had let slip who we were. You did not tell the group that it was because of the bounty hunters that had been hunting us. Did is that that is something Elphil told me, right? Yep. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope that's the exact laugh that Cody just did. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> well, that. Yes, that would that would absolutely make sense. I can 100% see how she would want us dead. Uh Yeah, I I don't think you all have the power to remove a Talarian bounty from our heads, especially it's apparently fairly lucrative. Like buy a city kind of lucrative. But if you had a way of misdirecting bounty hunters, or uh, Alaria could put out a higher bounty on the bounty hunters so they would fight among themselves. <laughs> I love that. He looks at all of you in size. You all yeah. just tripped and fell forward. Awkwardly stumbling and hitting every stair on the way down your way through this journey, haven't you? No. Hey, hey, man, who's got a higher bounty, you or me? <laughs> I don't know that I don't have a bounty in the Boris Empire. That's what I'm saying. I want to know. I don't know. I just said. Oh. Well, you gotta, well I imagine all the Alarian knights probably yeah. do. Well, when we get we'll back, we'll tell you. Back. you. <laughs> yeah. Brosian knights have a bounty here. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. C could you introduce us to the Brosian knights so that we can have some information before we go across the seas so that we can know <laughs> what their bounties are and also maybe what they like and dislike as far as fruits and flowers? <laughs> oh, you could ask Lilla. She's a she's an expert. OK, uh, rolling insight on expert. <laughs> uh, uh, negative one. She's an expert. <laughs> Man. That's what he said. I don't, I'm so excited to talk to her. I don't know what the ominous laugh before she's an expert was about, but yeah, I mean, if she's got info, then we'd love to we'd love to pick her brain a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's her favorite thing to talk about. You absolutely should. There's no one better. Oh. OK, yeah. I mean, you great. convinced us already multiple times. Is there anything else you all need? No, nah, I think I, we're good. A wheel of cheese? That I can probably get for you. I'm not sure why you need it, but I can probably get it for you. Heck yeah. I I can't think of anything that you can provide that we would ask for. 
So thank you for what you can provide. Fair enough. You're ha- welcome to rest here in the castle if you need to. I imagine that it would be very bounty hunter free. How late in the day is it? It's like midday, like late afternoon, somewhere in that range. It's certainly not go to Betty by time, but it is. Oh, we probably no, should but, figure out a place to stay. No, but after talking to Lilla, it might be Betty by time. Or or close to it enough that wow. leaving doesn't make sense. We, we gotta should... talk to Lilla, and then I gotta do a bathy by time. My hair, man, we've been traveling for a long time, and I didn't stay at my parents' place long enough to, to be able to shower like Koza. Yeah, I gotta wash my other singlet, too. Ew. Koza's looking clean over there. Uh, uh, thank you? You're welcome. <laughs> Argent is going to leave the room, closing the door behind him. Elite is going to turn to all of you and be like, so what's the plan, actually? Well, we we get the silver relic. And then we get on hopefully the Illustre and we go to the Barosian Empire. Question marks. Uh, some question marks after those question marks. And then we have the golden key, we go to the golden temple, and we get the golden relic, and then we bring back metallic dragons. Profit. Yes, profit. After after all that, absolutely, yes, profit. Sounds like a plan. It sounds like two-fifths of a plan. There's, um, there's some bits in the middle there that'll be kind of fiddly that, uh, I... I don't think we have enough information to solve. The fiddly bits are where we go sideways every single time. Well, Mm. in fairness, we can set the Barosian Palace on fire and not feel bad about it. Why is arson always the first thought? I'm just pulls out the matches again and goes. (laughs) 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 I'm just saying it is something we are good at. That historically we've been trying to tamp down a little bit uh, because it's not a great strategy for making friends and influencing people. But in the case of the Barosians, we don't want to make friends or really influence people. We we want to end a war before it begins, ideally. What, what, why wouldn't we want to make friends? Arjun said it himself. As long as we're distracting the Barosians from from invading Alaria, then we're good. And Koza's is right. If that means making friends, then we're making friends. I just don't. I don't think the Barosians who have been uh, trying to kill us for some time now, or tangentially trying to kill us for some time now, are likely to become our friends. Well, I think, think about, they have other think, friends that they like more than us. Think about it this way: the Alarian Knights are all the Alarian Knights, right? And the Alarian Knights stand for for certain things and core stuff, and they all are going to be protecting Alaria and doing good things. But if you think about them on an individual level, some of them are named June and are really cool, and you love them, and they're the greatest people ever, and you'd do anything to protect them. And some of them are named Argent, and you're like, <laughs> this guy's talking down his nose at me the whole time, and not just because I'm short. Like, there's definitely more to it than that. You know what I mean? And then maybe the Brosians are the same. <laughs> I certainly can't rule that out altogether, but I don't think it should be our first plan. Right. First plan. And Johannes takes out the matches. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Someone it, take those it, away from him. I have tried many times, and he is way better at hiding things in his armor than I ever would have anticipated. Johannes is wily. Yeah, but I don't have a squirrel to move it around when you're not looking anymore. Did you say that out loud? Yeah, I said that out loud. That explains so much. I know, he's really good. (laughs) All right. You guys go and either talk to Lilla or get ready to move. I'm... I need to go lie down. I... There's... I need to unpack a lot of this. That's... That's fair. 
there's been a lot going on, and it's the first time we've been able to really stop in a bit. Do you want any help with the unpacking? I've got two arms and a lot of energy. I might take you up on that later, Johannes. There's something that I think would be helpful to talk to someone about. Sounds good. I'll be here if you need me. Thank you, Johannes. She's going to leave and close the door behind her, leaving the four of you alone. I guess let's go find and talk to Lilla. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. You wander through the halls of the cat of the Alarian castle, feeling safe if a little bit trapped and stuffy. You can feel guards staring at you from every single corner. Every nook and every cranny seems to have eyes locked on you. And the thunderclap was just so (laughs) well-timed. You can hear outside the castle that thunder begins to rumble as a storm rolls in. You can sort of feel the air change as this storm approaches. You look through several rooms, but eventually find Lilla in the library. Hello, Lilla. <laughs> she looks up, kind of startled. What is it? Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Little I'm your, armor guy. I, I'm armor guy. I'm <laughs> glad we've met. Yeah, you're a little armor guy, and you're the <laughs> guy that got beaten up by Ainine. And you're the other guy yep. that was involved in that incident. And you were with Rain at one point, and I remember literally nothing else. Oh, um, I don't remember you either. Yeah, it's fair. Anyway, what do you want? What are your thoughts on Dum Dum Dum, the Barosian Knights? Her face immediately goes stony. Why? Because, Argent said uh, that you knew a lot about them. He said you're the expert, and we really want to get some more information because we plan on going over there and possibly beheading their leader. <laughs> Argent said to talk to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he said that you were not only the expert, but that you'd be really enthusiastic to share what you know. He's a bastard! It's what mm-hmm, he is. That's true. Well, we also were feeling like not super much his fans. Uh, I don't care for him. Yeah, he's a dick. I I thought for sure that he was being earnest with us when he said all this stuff about you and the Look, Barisian do Knights. I know some stuff about the Knights of the Boris Empire? Sure. Am I excited to talk about it? No. Am I excited to talk about it to some random adventures because Argent decided to be an asshole? No. Oh, well, I, I mean, if, we, if we're bothering you, like, we don't we, I we dated do have to... one of them a while ago, like years ago, so I know some stuff. Solinar... And if the without... army marches, I'm killing him first. Solinar's, like, he gets the, like, the, like, dawn of realization look a little bit, and without... You can tell that he's not doing this consciously. He walks into the room, pulls a chair out sits in it close to her, steeples his fingers and goes, please go on. Oh, Johannes pulls up a chair next to him and also goes, oh my God, I love tea. No, he (laughs) was the absolute worst. Okay, he was incredibly pompous. He was incredibly, like, if he messed up, if he messed up, no, 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 no. There was always someone else that was the reason he messed up. If he mixed up a spell component, no, he was just trying something experimental and you couldn't figure it out. He was egotistical. He was self-centered. He probably still is these things. Heck yeah, get him, girl. Solonar looks around and uh, he's he's like, he's like pinching both of his hands. He looks for a moment like a crab. And then he points at Koza and he's like, paper, paper and ink. I need, I, paper, ink, please, Uh, uh, please. uh, Okay. Please, I'm sorry, are you guys going to try to take down the Ilarian Knights by way of things their exes say about them? 
Maybe not the Alarians, but the Barosians. Oh yeah, we will. <laughs> Are you, yeah, no, I, makes look, sense. Any data is good data, and we are not good at remembering things. Oh, that is not a good statement. (laughs) (laughs) But he is right that that we're not good at remembering things. So the more outlandish and uh, uh, crazy things you can say, the better, because that'll stick in our heads. I want to be very clear. That was Josh talking, not Solonar. I was (laughs) not doing my Solonar voice, and I think all of you know that. Yeah, no, but I I do know that, which is why I was like, I which is why I a lot disagree <laughs> as somebody who works with data every day. Uh does does Koza produce Yeah, Koza hand, you can... hands you like his his notepad. Thank his you. Thank you very much. Thing. Yeah. Johannes Solonar... checks the library to see if there is a teapot kettle or anything over anywhere. Solonar flips to the very back of it so that he's not interrupting the flow of botanical drawings and things like that so he's actually a larian he studied at the at the marine academy that's where we met and then screwed off and decided to pledge his allegiance to the emperor of the boris empire before he was the emperor so now he's the leader of their cruddy little mage foot soldiers Okay, yes. He yes. also snores. Oh, like a dog. Yeah, get get like him. a dog. <laughs> Keep going. Yep. Uh-huh. And uh and does he smell his... too? Imagine this guy being like bark, 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 bark. <laughs> uh, his legs twitching, he's dreaming. <laughs> he thinks he can run. Go get uh, him. And 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 his his name and general age? Tegan Crestwood. And I don't know. That's T E G A N? Yes. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. And I don't know, humans all kind of age the same. Like you, <gasps> sort of, maybe a little bit younger, but like without the elfy bits. Solonar just like, he, he gets kind of like a squinty face as he tries to think about what that means. <laughs> Like older, older than the the ponytail guy, but not as old as like the bald guy. Mm-hmm. Solonar's just gonna write down forty, forty <laughs> question mark question mark. What's his special move? <laughs> He's decently okay at magic and decently okay at like martial stuff he swings a stick around and kicks a bunch i don't know it looks stupid does he have so he, his special move is the stick and kick <laughs> does he have any allergies ideally ones that would kill him um okay so he's allergic to being honest about his feelings uh, uh-huh. Dealing with conflict straight on and without being passive aggressive, uh, admitting faults. Uh-huh. I think that one will straight kill him. Um, and radish. Okay. Solonar has written down all of this, writes radish in like all caps and underlines it three times. And he's like, well, if we get an opportunity to feed him crow, we will be sure to do that. Break his stupid glasses. Oh, where's his glasses? Put that down. <laughs> the clues are all coming here. together. And he's got a dumb yes. little tattoo on his face that he thinks makes him look cool. Oh my god, what is it? It's just like a like a triangle, I guess. Oh, that sounds pretty cool, actually. No, don't. Uh-uh. No, it's not. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I guess... I don't know what the triangle is supposed to symbolize, so I can't. I it can't doesn't. Speak he to just it. thinks it makes him look cool. Oh. It symbolizes a triangle. Symbolizes him being an asshole. <laughs> okay. Uh, I look. I I don't know if this is uh, a, a positive venting session where you feel like you can really get all these things out, or if this is uh, us enraging you and the rest of your day is going to be spent being mad 
I mean, in fairness, I'm studying to better kill Barosian soldiers because they are about to invade. And he is a Barosian soldier. So if you think that this is what started me thinking about murdering him, I have wonderful news for you. That ship has sailed. Well, no. Uh, more More. my point was I, I hope that talking about this was good feeling as opposed to bad feeling. Look, you know how there's like a certain number of Alarian knights and we all sort of have our thing? Uh-huh. Yeah. Rosie and knights are exactly the same. Uh. There's just as many of them and they each have their own little thing. The only difference <laughs> is, is that they're a little bit more ingrained into the military than we are. Solinar writes down Dark World Alarian Knights <laughs> and underlines it once. I mean, they have an entire core of Wyvern writers, so... Johannes writes underneath it, everyone has their own thing. They sure do, buddy. Ugh. Gods, I hope you kill him. Or I kill him. Or that just somebody smacks the stupid smug look off his stupid smug face. We'll do our absolute best. Hmm. You know, you guys have been doing, like, a decent job at stumbling awkwardly into success. Thank you. (laughs) Maybe he'll burn his house down or something. We can do that. (laughs) (laughs) That was going to take those patches away from (laughs) Johannes! That is one of the things Argent asked us to do was to, while we're in the Boris Empire, uh, stir up as much chaos as physically possible, which I think we are uniquely suited to doing, at least. So, you know, if, if that's helpful, like, is there, is there anything you can think of that we could do uh, between needing to go to the Silver Temple, which is supposed to be somewhere around here, and then go to a port and travel across the ocean to the Barosian Empire and then do stuff there if we can be helpful to you delivering messages or uh, trying to warn people about what might be coming or any really anything anything you can think of we'd be happy to do that it's just whatever you do to the people of the empire just make sure it's to combatants yeah I want Tegan absolutely eviscerated but I don't have any ill will to the people of the Boros Empire they're the civilians have nothing to do with this war is this not a a popular war activity I have no idea but even if they've been told that it's good for them that doesn't mean that they're combatants yeah, I mean, I, our plan, our plan that Coles and I were talking about was to befriend them. No, don't do that to Tegan. Kill Tegan. Don't worry about that. Oh yeah, no, he he'll, he's gonna die. Don't worry. Awesome. Ugh. Oh oh my god! Mm-hmm. I already asked for a wheel of cheese that Arjun said he'd get me, but I thought of something that I'd also like to have. Yeah. Radishes. Bum bum bum. <laughs> some thank yous I would like to say to the Patreon to make this show possible and I want to give each of y'all a mushroom Captain Envy you are the beautiful Rusula Dangerous Gaming the horse mushroom Domovoy how could you be anything other than the inside out Agaric. Elizabeth Lee, you're the the, the, the giant puffball. Jeff Buck, 
Absolutely you are. The livid Intoloma. Thank you all so much. Alita and Johannes' relationship is just that vine where the lady goes, what do you got there? To a kid and the kid goes, a knife! And she goes, no! (laughs) That's just their whole relationship.